guys welcome back to my channel and today I'll be filming my 23 weeks pregnancy update and a Q&A video. I thought that I did a little pregnancy type of a video right at the beginning of my pregnancy and then now I'm sort of right past my midpoint of the pregnancy and then I thought I will do one at the very end. Personally I think I will probably want to go back to these videos years from now and rewatch and see what I was experiencing and stuff like that and also a lot of you guys always write in asking questions in regards to the pregnancy and then just family life, Adriana and stuff like that so I thought it is a perfect opportunity. Yesterday I posted a picture and asked you guys on Instagram to submit your questions so I got a lot of questions and I went through them. I picked out similar questions I have them all here on my iPad. I have about 20 questions so before I get into the questions though I wanted to just quickly talk about like an update. There's really not much to update you guys but I thought I'll do a quick update first and then jump right into the questions because there's a lot of them and I don't want the video to be super super long so the first thing I wanted to do before I talk about anything else is show you guys the bump I actually wore the same shirt yesterday and this shirt has been my favorite so far I got it a few weeks ago for the da, 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 the pregnancy uh, the baby gender reveal I wanted something new and comfortable and this top is from H&M and it's so perfect because it's like flowy and I love the pattern of the flowers so anyways I will just get up and show you guys the bump so I'm 23 weeks um, today actually and here's what the bump looks like from the front Front and the side so it's growing and the little baby boy is now here it's probably easier because the shirts kind of um, loose in the back so you can see it more this way so I mean I think to me the bump looks pretty much the same as it did the first time around with Adriana so yeah so what um, what has been new so far so as far as my nausea and other symptoms that come with the first trimester all that is thankfully gone on. I'm so so grateful because it was really really tough this time around like with Adriana it was similar but I feel like for some reason this time it lingered way longer into the second trimester I feel like it was just maybe a month ago that it kind of went away it lingered way way longer with Adriana I think I was about 12 13 weeks going into like 14 weeks and I started feeling better and I was able to enjoy food and stuff like that this time around it just felt way longer so that's like a major difference as far as the two pregnancies go so I still can't drink coffee again with Adriana I was able I will be comparing a lot because that's kind of all I have to compare to as far as the experiences go so um, with Adriana the first time uh, the first trimester I just was like couldn't stand the smell of coffee everything was nauseating but then as I got into my second trimester I actually started craving it was actually summertime and I was craving iced coffee constantly specifically from Tim Hortons if you're Canadian you will know what I'm talking about not the iced cap but the iced coffee it was so delicious I had to have it like every day after lunch so um, but this time around for some reason it the smell doesn't make me sick per se but I don't enjoy coffee and to me this is like so weird and strange because normally I absolutely love coffee I love the smell of coffee I love the whole ritual of drinking coffee in the morning to me just like morning and coffee go hand in hand so unfortunately I still don't enjoy it and I really pray that it doesn't like it doesn't affect me after pregnancy because I really love my coffee and I want to enjoy it but I don't right now so I don't drink it because there's no point I can't because you're allowed to have a cup a day but anyways so that's major difference for me because coffee is kind of like a big deal for me and then another thing is the smell of cucumbers is still affecting me which is so weird like cucumbers are one of my favorite vegetables I love fresh salads I eat them like almost every day with dinner but I haven't been able to enjoy cucumbers as well again it's not as nauseating the smell as it was in the beginning but I still like it still gets me and I still can't enjoy it so those two things are kind of weird because I didn't have that the first time around and I don't know why this time around I don't know if it's because it's a boy or it's just you know a different pregnancy altogether so those are kind of like the major things as far as everything else to be honest with you guys there's not much to update on um, everything is pretty much the same my energy levels are better 
like I have, you know, I'm not as exhausted as I was in the first trimester although I'm not sleeping well because Adriana is still going through her sleep regression for whatever reason, I don't know if it's developmental or teething or something else but so she's still not sleeping well and consequently I'm not sleeping well so you know because of that I feel tired but I don't think it's because of the pregnancy any longer I haven't been able to exercise as much just because of time constraints and I also actually one more update is I forgot a couple weeks ago maybe like three weeks ago or so three four weeks ago a month ago for some reason I never experienced this with Adriana I had just out of nowhere it was a weekend thank God because Dimitri was home and was able to you know I was able to not lift Adriana because if it was a weekday and I had and I was alone with her I would have to do it you know regardless so I had just very strange pain in like my groin area um to a point where it was hard to walk like it was painful to walk i have no idea what caused it it just kind of came out of nowhere i worked out twice that week very very like mellow workouts nothing crazy just like some stretching so i was like i don't know was it because of the workouts i don't think it was because just as quickly as it came on just it just left just as fast so by the end of the day i was feeling fine and it's not like i even rested i you know i don't have the opportunity to rest during the day so I was still kind of doing stuff but it was just harder to walk and like function but um, the only difference I did is I didn't lift Adriana as much so I don't know if that helped or not but again I don't know what it was it just was like hard to walk and hard to stand on my right foot so like when the weight was kind of on the right side I have no idea what caused it but like I said just as quickly as it came it left knock on wood and I haven't had any pain since so I researched a little bit and I talked to my midwife and I think it was just like you know ligaments stretching and bone stretching and everything kind of like expanding I have no idea so those are kind of like the few updates that are new and different otherwise it's getting harder to sleep um, as far as like sleep positions go I'm a tummy sleeper I have to be on my stomach I love sleeping on my stomach I cannot fall asleep anywhere else but obviously when you're pregnant and when you're exhausted regardless you'll find a way to fall asleep so right now I sleep on my side I do tend to prefer my right side over the left side although there is a myth I don't know if it's true or not some people say it's true some people say it's not that it's better to sleep on your left side I don't know I try to go back and forth between the two but I do prefer sleeping on my right side so it is getting harder my breasts have you know grown so that also makes it harder as um, with the tummy and then of course another update the most exciting update of the pregnancy all together is that I'm feeling the baby's moves now and it is so special and so so it's truly my favorite part of the whole entire pregnancy is when you when the baby moves and kicks and you kind of feel that it's just it's so magical and so wonderful if you've been through the pregnancy before before. you know what I'm talking about there's nothing like it and it's just it's just so wonderful and I'm so grateful so this time around it's very subtle I don't know if it's because it's still early on and you know there's still a lot of room in there or it's just you know a different temperament of a you know the baby has a different temperament I'm not sure I do feel that this boy is gonna be more this could just be my feelings like I have no idea if they're based on reality or not but I do feel like this boy is gonna be more mellow and soft and kind of feminine energy as opposed to like like a very manly man again I could be wrong time will tell and we'll see if you know what kind of a boy man this this being is gonna be so I think those are all the updates as far as what I talked about previously and now I'm gonna jump right into the questions because again I don't want the video super long so the first question is any updates about baby's health as far as the down syndrome risk goes if you watched um, the previous videos I talked about the vlog where the blood work from the first First ultrasound showed that the baby might be uh, might have Down syndrome so we went and did a test called a blood test that's called um, NIPT it's a brand new test about a year old and it is an alternative to doing an amniocentesis which is where they take the fluid from your belly to test it's less accurate but it's like 99.9% .9 accurate but it's definitely less invasive and pretty much like if you get if you if the results come back um, negative like the baby doesn't have sen a Down syndrome then it's pretty pretty accurate um, and my midwife said that in all the times in all the years of her experience that um, well the test is only a year old but anyways she said that like based on the numbers and everything else it looks like it really could not be like it's one in 10,000 chance so it's very unlikely and also I had the second ultrasound which is where they check all the anatomy and all the organs you know obviously the heart and all the other things and everything came back 
that perfect. Usually Down syndrome babies have some heart defects and none of that showed up. So I don't know, we still don't know obviously until the baby's born, but so far I really do feel like, you know, everything is fine, but really we won't know until the baby's born 100%. Although again, I feel like, you know, the baby is totally healthy. So on to the second question, what has been different in this pregnancy in comparison to your first? So like I was mentioning earlier, it's pretty, pretty similar, although there are few minor differences. The most kind of a pronounced difference, I guess for me, is that it feels a lot more challenging this time around because obviously I am taking care of a toddler full time, running around after her all day. So, and then the fact that I'm not able to rest and get proper sleep at night is definitely affecting my overall experience and like how I feel physically. So it's definitely, definitely harder physically, but the fact that, you know, Adriana brings so much joy into our life, my life, and just thinking of this new baby and imagining what he's gonna be like and how he's gonna complete our family. You know, it kind of overpowers all the other challenging physical demands that, you know, a woman's body goes through. So the next question is, when is the baby due? The baby is due middle July, 2017. What week did Nazia go away? I don't remember the exact week, but I think, like I was saying earlier, I think it was like a month ago. So I must've been in like my, my fourth months or something like that something like that i don't remember exactly but it, it really feels like it really dragged on way way long like now i'm almost six months i guess i'm 23 weeks um so it's like five months and three weeks so yeah it it just was like well into my second trimester i guess next question have you picked out a name we have not and i think we're gonna do the same thing we did with adriana which is we had like a top three or whatever list of names and i mean in my heart i i always knew like adriana was felt right but I didn't want to decide 100% we didn't want to decide 100% until we saw what this being was like and felt the energy and yeah I think we're gonna do the same thing I have a favorite name for a boy one name I'm not gonna reveal it until baby is born and if we decide to pick that name for some reason I really feel strongly about that name and I feel like it really will suit this being but again I'm not gonna make a final decision until I meet this little being and see it I you know how that name you know fits in with uh, his personality and his temperament so um, Dimitri has uh, quickly looked at names but I don't think he's picked out his favorites yet so we're not quite there yet and we have lots of time to decide so on to the next question do you plan to teach your children the foreign languages you know and absolutely right now I do like 99% of the time 99.9% .9 of the time speak English to Adriana because Dimitri and I speak English to each other and I think that it just would be weird if I would speak to her in one language and then like would speak a different language to him it just feels like a weird dynamic Although I do know a lot of uh, families and couples that do that to me it just doesn't feel like something I would want to do But um, as she learns to speak I definitely will you know will be teaching her Greek and then Russian like even right now My parents for example speak Russian to her and sometimes Azeri and then Dimitri's parents speak Greek So she's already exposed to three languages, but you know, of course majority of the time it's English Which I'm not a, like, you know, I'm not worried about it I know that children really pick up languages fast so when she's able to speak um, and kind of is like developed her language skills in general then I think it'll be easier to start introducing and teaching other languages I would love to teach her even like Spanish and French and things like that because you know maybe Italian languages are a huge asset in my opinion and you can never go wrong with knowing too many especially that for children their brains their like parts of the brain they're responsible for for language and speech are like you know so active so it's the perfect time to teach languages so next question are you trying hypnobirthing this time as well and what resources do you recommend so I definitely will be using hypnobirthing I feel like I'm I already know what it is so I don't even know if I'll be listening to um, the the uh, not the tapes the recordings that I have as many times as I did last time because I already know what the process is like like I know what to do mentally um, but yes absolutely I will be doing it because it was exactly what I believe helped me to have I wouldn't say completely positive experience but the kind of yeah I guess it was a positive experience actually you know because it was really like my my uh, labor progressed really fast I was dilated like seven eight centimeters before I even got to the hospital and I just feel like my overall attitude and outlook about pregnancy and delivery was so positive by myself and also with hypnobirthing that it definitely all helped to create a very positive and like I'm not gonna say pain-free because it wasn't pain-free but a positive experience overall and a fast healing experience so uh, as far as what resources to use 
use though um just as i mentioned before if you are if you've never done meditation if you've never tried like doing affirmations and visualizations and things like that you have no experience in that then i would definitely recommend taking classes in person i believe most cities should have that i would just google your area and see if there's any classes that you can take in person because that would be helpful they can really break it down to you if you have done if you have some experience with meditation or just feel confident that you can kind of uh, you're like a self learner and can teach yourself how i am i i would suggest looking up online there's also books you can read books i will link um a book i actually haven't read the book but i know mimi i think was reading it and a lot of people online recommend that book so i will link that down below if you want to check out the book i can't remember when it's what it's called something hypnobirthing i can't remember and there's also recordings there's also i believe there's some like free stuff on youtube like free video uh, not video videos or like audio recordings that you can listen to so it's totally up to you as far as like what you feel you need for me i knew that i didn't need to go to class i could just listen to the recordings and you know do it at my own time and that was perfect for me so definitely highly recommend if you're pregnant or if you're thinking of getting pregnant think of using hypnobirthing as a tool because again you know i don't want to talk too much about it but unfortunately in our culture there's a lot of fear about pregnancy and delivery and labor and a lot of like you know horror stories out there of course those things happen but it doesn't have to be your experience and you don't have to think about it and you don't have to like ruminate over it in your head instead you can use the time while you're pregnant to visualize the experience that you're wishing and there's such tremendous power in your mind and what it can create so again this isn't a video on hypnobirthing but i feel very passionately and strongly about it so i'm sure you guys can tell from the way i speak about it so i definitely recommend looking into that next question are you having another unmedicated birth absolutely definitely planning on not having any drugs at all i had um a, a natural birth first time around in case you don't know um i didn't have any epidural like laughing gas or whatever nothing 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 because it was just something that was important for me i felt very strongly that as a woman my body was designed for this experience and you know billions of women have done it before me billions will do it after me you know it's it's definitely it was definitely the most excruciating pain i've ever gone through but the fact that i was able to feel everything i was able to be in control i felt the baby you know the baby even though she was um stuck in there for about um uh, an hour posterior which is face up which means that she's stuck like you can't deliver face up unless um they're able to turn her even though she was stuck in there her heart rate never went up and i really attribute that to the fact that i was one doing hypnobirthing so i was very calm and peaceful even though on the outside i wasn't i was screaming and cursing and all that but on the inside i was you know using my mind to try to stay calm and peaceful and connect to the baby and feel my body and all that so um, i really feel that because of that connection and like i think adriana really felt in tune subconsciously of course the baby doesn't like consciously do this but her heartbreak never went up and that to me is such a huge indicator that um you know who knows if i had epidural and i would be like freaking out because i couldn't feel anything you know it's not for everybody so you know for whatever reason you choose to do that that's totally fine it's out there for a reason and it definitely serves a purpose in some cases but for me i really pray again that everything goes well and i don't need to take anything and i can have an unmedicated birth so next question how will you manage two kids will you have help or do it by yourself um how will i manage i have no idea i mean i've, I have never had two kids i think we'll be just fine again there's so many billions of families that have more than one kid and they manage you know they figure it out um as far as having help help i don't think so i plan on raising them myself as much as i can yeah i don't you know we're not gonna i don't have any help now and i'm not planning on getting any i will i'm planning on being home as much as i can i'm still continuing youtube and stuff like that but like when they're sleeping because for me i feel again very strongly about raising them myself and being as present as i can especially in their like formative years because i think if you can afford it it's the best that if one of the parents can be as present as possible you know as far as raising the children goes so next question do you think fitness and exercise plays any role in making the delivery easier at all i definitely do i think another factor in my why my pregnancy went so well and then why the delivery and then also the recovery was so you know kind of i guess fast or or like normal 
alone without complications is because I stayed active throughout the pregnancy first time around. Unfortunately, this time around is not the same as far as like actual exercise goes, but because I'm like with Adriana all day long, up and down the stairs, moving around, I feel like I get a lot of just movement and I think that already is a form of exercise in a way. I, again, I've worked out a couple times during this pregnancy, but not nearly as much as I did the first time around. I do miss working out, but with my current schedule and not sleeping and everything else going on in our lives, unfortunately, I haven't been able to fit in as much of the fitness as I would like to. I still am aiming to do at least yoga and stretches at least twice a week, you know, half an hour, something like that. No excuses. I'm still working on that. I'm not perfect, guys. You know, as long as you have the intention and as long as at least you're moving, even if you don't find the time to exercise, just move, you know, go for a walk. If you have a dog, take the dog for a walk, whatever it is, just move. I think that definitely makes a huge difference. So next question, what is your pregnancy diet and any supplements that you take? My diet is pretty much the same. I mean, I don't eat any raw fish. Uh, what else? I obviously avoid alcohol. Um, although some alcohol is okay here and there, but um, I don't really care for it. So it doesn't make much of a difference. What else? I think it's pretty much the same guys. I eat the same amount. So I, I'll eat twice a day with a snack in between. And yeah, I mean, nothing's really changed as far as my diet. And then supplements, I take prenatal vitamins. I take vitamin D, iron, and fish oil. I believe that's it, those four things. So prenatal vitamins, vitamin D, iron, and fish oil. Iron because I don't eat meat and you need extra when you're pregnant. And then, yeah. That's basically it. So next question, how will you prepare Adriana for the baby's arrival? And does she understand what's happening? So we have been talking to her, or, uh, especially me, because I have the bump, you know, that, you know, there's a baby here and I show her my tummy and she loves, absolutely loves pulling up my shirt and <laughs> kissing the tummy and kind of like laying on the tummy. So I don't know how much of it she understands because she's still so young. She's, you know, a year and a half. She's going to be 17 months at the end of the month. Like. I guess next week on the 28th so you know I don't know how much she understands but I feel like she does get some of it you know we'll ha we have the book that talks about being a sibling and being an older sister and so she loves that book and she loves you know looking at the baby and she says Bebe, or something like in her own language she says baby when she points at my tummy so I don't know I don't know how much she understands but actually it was really cute one day um, she was like kissing she was eating and like kind of like looking at my tummy and petting it or whatever and then she tried to feed my tummy whatever she was eating and I thought that was the cutest thing so she must understand something like you know there's a being there and I'm feeding it I don't know so regardless though I think it will be a time of adjustment like there will be a period of adjustment when there is an actual baby because she's not used to like sharing you know my attention so but anyways I'm sure we'll figure it out and yeah where are we now um oh, are you planning on breastfeeding and yes absolutely I'm planning on breastfeeding even though it's a lot of work and it's a big commitment I think to me it is the absolute best gift you can give to your child because it is a gift of immunity and there's nothing greater than immunity because that's it's your health you know so I'm planning on breastfeeding as long as I can and yeah so that's that next question is are you worried about splitting your attention and time between two children um not worried per se it just kind of breaks my heart because I know that it will be hard for Adriana at the beginning because you know sometimes I'll, I'll hold my friend's baby and I see her kind of like feeling jealous and just like wanting mommy and wanting mommy's attention because in her world imagine you know she all she knows is me and her together 24 7 my attention is on her constantly so of course it's it just it feels foreign it feels different for her to share me with somebody else but you know human beings are such flexible people beings that i know that she will be just fine with time she'll adjust and i plan on giving her so much to continue giving her as much love and attention as i can because she's my everything she's my everything so yeah I'm sure it will be hard at the beginning but you know eventually she'll get used to the fact that there's a new being and this is the new normal and the fact that she's still loved and her needs are still taken care of will will make her feel secure and then she's in general such a caring and loving toddler towards babies and other beings that I know that she will love this baby and her her brother and that will be great help actually so that's that next question any tips on avoiding stretch marks and what products do you use uh, on your 
belly so I don't really know to be honest with you guys if there is anything you can do to avoid stretch marks because I didn't get any with Adriana and I really do believe that a lot of it has to do with genetics my mom didn't have any so I think you know I can't really take credit for that I think it's just genetics so that but I also do believe that making sure that your skin is well moisturized is very important so um, yeah I think there's not much you can do if it's genetic but I think you can probably make it better by just taking care of your skin so moving on to the next question will you do anything differently when the baby boy is born as far as par parenting style and technique and I don't think so I think with Adriana I did a lot of research because uh, I had I didn't know anything about parenting or how to take care of a baby but now I feel like I have more experience and coupled with my intuition I feel like you know whatever I did with her was pretty effective and worked really well she's a great baby she's very happy and healthy so I really don't feel like I did any mistakes as far as um, creating bad habits or anything like that so I feel like I will just continue doing uh, what worked but of course um, depending on the baby's temperament and his personality I might have to adjust a few things but overall I will continue to use the same sort of um, philosophy parenting philosophy you know conscious parenting with love no fear just very easygoing no paranoia and just kind of letting them be uh, but that's a whole other topic for maybe another video another day so um, next question is did you have a feeling you were having a boy and did you want a boy and yes I did talk about it in one of the previous videos I did have a feeling it was a boy right when I first got pregnant for some reason I had like this feeling that hmm, I feel like it might be a boy with Adriana I had no feeling whatsoever at the beginning throughout the pregnancy never had a feeling never tried to force it because I didn't care either way and this time around I didn't care either way either <laughs> um, I think two, two like if it was a girl two sisters would be amazing because you know I have a sister and it's so much fun to have a sister and if it's a boy I thought it would be so cool to have one you know a boy and a girl so one of each and then for Adriana to have a baby brother so either way it made no difference but yes I did have a feeling that it might be a boy but I didn't know if that feeling was like you know right or not until we actually found out I was like oh my god it's a boy but you guys saw the video you saw my, my reaction we're just we're just so blessed and so overjoyed either way boy or girl but um, I know we're gonna have so much fun and Adriana is gonna have so much fun with a boy so next question is did you take anything to help with nausea and I didn't personally I know there are some things you can take out there on the market I personally am against taking medications for me if I can avoid it I will avoid it at all costs of course unless you absolutely have to for whatever reason but yeah I thought I felt like I could even though it was terrible and absolutely oh it's just so like draining on you but I just didn't want to take anything because that's just not who I am and I just chose to do things that kind of helped me to relieve the feeling feeling of nausea it wouldn't make it go away but it helped to like relieve it temporarily things that helped me were car carbonated drinks so like sparkling water cranberry juice was really helpful at points in the pregnancy also uh, clamato juice for some reason orange juice fruits in general I feel like really like help a lot so citrusy fruits and then um, granny smith apples green grapes things like that were definitely that I would reach for and that would help me temporarily but normally I would kind of like I feel um, I feel what I need in the moment with like what does my body need in that moment and it changes from moment to moment also I had kombucha drinks and I know I researched before and it said that you know some people say to avoid it during pregnancy but then other sources said if you were a kombucha drinker there's absolutely nothing wrong with drinking while you're pregnant again don't go overboard everything in balance and moderation so I'll have it here and there if I feel like my body needs it and yeah unfortunately um, I don't know what to recommend because I never took anything um, as far as medication I would just my best advice would be just see what your body gravitate towards uh, because I feel like your body will know what it needs to help itself again it won't make it go away completely but it does help to manage the nausea so last two questions how do you manage your time between taking care of a toddler Dimitri housework work and yourself so it's definitely a balancing act just like any other parent or any other mom out there you know I don't have all the answers I'm just trying to figure it out as I go along overall though for me Adriana is my absolute number one priority I enjoy my time with her every every second I truly do I enjoy spending with her and um, taking care of her 
hours so she's my number one priority and then of course Dimitri and the, taking care of the house and making sure um, you know everybody is well fed um, takes a lot of time but it, uh, very, it's very gratifying to me of course it's important to take care of yourself as well but I'm the type of person that I will take care of everyone and everything else as far as like house and cleaning and this and that before I take care of myself so my time to do things for myself and like take care of my own needs like manicures and pedicures and editing videos and things like that is after everybody is sleeping and it's right before I go to sleep so that's like my little window of time because during the day again I don't have help I don't um, I don't have any childcare and stuff like that so I'm with Adriana all day and I love it I wouldn't have it any other way so as far as working goes though I don't really work as much um, as far as hairstyling goes I will have a client here and there I have a home studio so I will have a client here and there but with my current schedule and we're also like house hunting we might be moving if we find the right house for the right price because right now the housing market in Toronto is absolutely crazy it's just insane what's going on so if we find the right house we'll move if not we'll figure out what we're gonna do but yeah so because of that you know everything else going on it's hard to add you know clients into the mix as well so yeah that I just as far as how I manage it I don't know I just try to do my best every single day and you know just like everyone else just try to figure it out as I go along so last question is did we plan to have a boy and if we did any tips and if you guys uh, watched previous videos you know that this pregnancy just as it was with Adriana was not planned and so because it wasn't planned of course we didn't plan to have a boy I don't even know how you would plan to have a boy or a girl I mean I know there are things you can do so to speak like I don't know I, I've never tried to <laughs> do that because I don't really care either way boy or girl but yeah no we definitely did not try to have a boy yeah that's pretty much it so thank you guys so much for submitting all your questions I had a lot of fun answering them and I hope you enjoyed the video a thank you for your continued love and support I really feel like you guys are like our and my extended family out there and I really truly do love you guys so much and I absolutely love meeting you guys outside of you know social media in the real world if you guys ever approach me it just makes my day so yeah thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video give it a big thumbs up if you're new to the channel go ahead and hit that subscribe button and yeah I hope you're having a beautiful day and I will see you in the next video bye